Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darbin Notes channel. It's time for a little shop update. And uh, let's see, I'm just kind of working here on a couple of different things. I'm on a bit of a mallet kick. I have a couple of different mallets going uh, right now. And I'm um, also just kind of thinking about spoon carving. I watched a couple of spoon carving videos this morning. And I'm just really interested in that and I'm trying to think about how to get going on that a little bit more. Um, I'm also working on making more of these little boxes and making small ones uh, and uh, I'm just kind of playing with that too. I'd like to make like a whole bunch. They're so relaxing and fun to do, making little boxes with the box joints. Uh, so I really would just like to make a whole bunch more of those. Okay, well, a couple of more little tiny storage boxes. Perfect, now I just need to finish this one. Let's see. <clears throat> well, in the shop, I did some wood storage uh, above the windows. I started with making some brackets and I actually used bridal joints for those because they're nice and strong. Um, and I just made two for each side, so four all together. Uh, and then I wanted uh, slats for the shelves because I didn't want to like block the wood completely so you couldn't see what's up there. Of course, at the first board you put up, it kind of does block it, but I wanted some more airiness. So I decided to just create like a slat system and I just screwed it in really simple. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. And then I just uh, put it on top of the bracket uh, and I also screwed it in just to make sure it doesn't fall on my head or anything like that. And then I was able to just put some wood up there. Well, I mean, what's great about this is that it's not going to give me like a ton of storage, but for, you know, a couple of pieces and scraps and nice wood, you know, it's really great to just have somewhere to be able to put that because there just isn't a whole lot of space for that. I mean, quite a few people suggested that I put wood on top of the beams and uh, I tried that. So it was just really annoying to get on and off and I have wires up there and I just don't really like that option. So I have to think about other creative ways to store wood. I've also been working on a little stand with a sign uh, that says Darwin Orver uh, for the local hardware store. Now for the stand I'm using a piece of rough sawn uh, walnut here and I'm just planing it down to get it nice and smooth. And then I also want to chamfer the edges with a planer to kind of give it a little bit more of a finished look here. The next thing I wanted to do was to create a groove. So I used this new little gadget that reads the angle and I set my blade to five degrees or 85 degrees. Um, and then I just cut a couple of uh, times to create this groove where the sign could go. <laughs> and then I just uh, printed out a sign and put it on some hard stock and uh, finished the piece with my favorite, my uh, wax and linseed oil mixture. And then I went to see the sign in the store. And this is where I get a lot of my wood and supplies and painting stuff. I'm just picking up some brushes here. Thor's hammer at the local hardware store. And just in case someone wants to know where, they can find the video. So this is Spathe Lumber, uh, a local hardware store here in Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, and uh, it's just kind of fun going up uh, to the counter there and seeing uh, my sign and seeing Thor's hammer. Uh, so that was, that's been kind of fun now. I, I get a lot of wood from them, they're really great. So it's actually why I've been making um, mallets lately because I got some really great uh, rough sawn walnut from them. So I'm just kind of playing with big pieces of walnut and seeing what I can do with them and I'm absolutely loving it and they have a couple of you know rough sawn different types of wood so I'm kind of just you know wanting to get into that more I just find that to be you know really interesting and this is a pretty big one. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so since I was doing the nightstand in my last video and I was working on the top for that so I went to the hardware store to pick up uh, some brushes for the polyurethane uh, to get something nice. When you get brushes, it's kind of nice to get a couple of different ones so that you don't have to go from having you know, oil paint on one to polyurethane on the same one. So if you have dedicated brushes for each thing, then you're going to end up with a better result. So if you can, it's nice to have several brushes, each for each thing. You can mark them to make sure you don't you know, mix and use them for different things. 
Also, another thing to keep in mind when you buy brushes is to, uh, you know, buy natural bristle for oil paints and polyurethanes and things like that. You don't want to go with a nylon brush or polyester brush for uh, oil-related things. So, you know, pay attention when you buy them so that you don't buy the wrong one. Because, you know, water-based for nylon and natural bristle for oil and things like that. Yeah, having nice brushes and dedicated brushes really make a huge difference. I mean, that's often what can really mess up a finish is if, you know, you have a brush that has some, you know, pieces of, you know, old paint or some other kind of finish in it and it gets into the piece that you're working on and this is really kind of hard to get that out. Uh, so having nice dedicated brushes makes a very big difference. So it's just something nice to be able to kind of invest in over time. So of course there are different types of brushes to buy. Now what, what's the difference between a good brush, you know, and, and a not so good brush? And a good brush there is basically about how much uh, finish the brush can hold. So if there are like a lot of split ends, for example, that's a good thing because uh, you want the brush to be able to hold a lot of, uh, you know, polyurethane or paint or whatever it is that you're using it for. And of course, another thing is that you want a ferrule that is uh, very strong and put together well because you abuse these quite a bit when you clean them over and over again and you want to be able to really kind of work with them and not be afraid of doing that. Um, so, I mean, I've gone through like a lot of brushes over the years, you know, starting with lower models or lower quality brushes and then kind of throwing them out and then just realizing that it's really nice to get, you know, nicer brushes, but then you have to, make, you know, have to take care of them, of course, uh, which is why you need high quality brushes to begin with that can withstand that. Uh, and then of course also remember that if you're using like polyurethane on a brush then you need to clean it but if you have a dedicated brush for like shellac or lacquer then you don't even need to clean it because that will just dry um, because then of course when you want to use it again it will dissolve right back uh, in uh, denatured alcohol or lacquer thinner. Since this um, in my last project I was painting the nightstands. I just wanted to show you guys how I set up my uh, DIY spray booth real quick. So I just wanted to show my makeshift spray booth here and what's great about this is that I can disassemble it, put it back up again and it doesn't take a whole lot of room. I assembled this with a framing lumber like two by twos cut up and I have a thin plastic. I believe this is like three millimeter plastic, maybe two millimeter. So it's sandwiched in between here I have a thinner uh, piece of wood and I just kind of stapled it in there with a the plastic in between. You can kind of see that the paint has created like a film over time with the, fill, with the, with the paint and then the dust and it kind of kicks up. And that's just because I've been using it over and over again. Um, so when, I wanna, when it's time to use this, a spray gun, I like to set this up just to contain it so that the paint doesn't go everywhere. And what I do is I just put it up and then I connect them all with clamps. And I'm just using a C-clamp. So now I have a covered little area, ready to put a project in and ready to spray. Then of course I'm still waiting for the top to fully cure on the nightstand. So hopefully on Wednesday I'll have a video up on you know finishing it here and wet sanding it and also uh, clear coating the base with uh, water-based polyurethane to give it some protection. Um, let's see, what else? I'm still working on shop organization and getting things straightened out over here. So I have a couple of projects coming up about that. Uh, some a little bit larger than others, a rather large one actually coming up soon. Oh, another thing, I don't know if you guys remember, but I was planning on putting brick on this wall, mostly because I really wanted that nice kind of background. I was gonna whitewash it uh, and I, was, I had cut up quite a bit of brick for that. But then I started thinking and realized that, you know, space is really limited and you don't really want to, you know, nail things on top of brick and, you know, hang things on top of brick, uh, you know, especially not veneer. So then I was thinking, I still want that contrast kind of background. So I was thinking, why not just nail up wood, uh, pine, uh, and then kind of stack it in different, you know, places and then whitewash that because then I'll get a little bit of that texture and a nice background but it will also be really practical because then I can just hang things wherever I need them because I'm just you know getting a whole bunch of more things that I want to display and organize so I'm gonna do that soon too I actually got a whole bunch of wood the other day because it was nice weather so uh, every time it's nice I make sure I get some wood if that's if I'm looking um, for, to do a new project so yeah new things happening with the shop uh, so that's very exciting and a lot of different work going on here in general. 
so I think that's about it. Uh, don't forget to check out my main channel, Darben Orver. If you're finding yourself here for the first time, I put up uh, weekly videos there every Friday. Uh, and otherwise, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a few days. Bye!